Alright, in this video that supplements Mr. Volan's 6th grade math class, we are going to focus on one thing and one thing only. We're going to focus on distinguishing factors from multiples. Okay, and we're going to use my good friend 10. 10 is going to be the magic number that we're working with here. Okay, and in this video I'm just going to give you a couple of tips on how to remember which one is which, which one is a factor, which one is a multiple. Okay, so without further ado, let's get going. I'll just start by listing off the factors of 10. Okay, if you already have these straight, then you might already know. Well, the factors of 10, we'll start off with 1 and 10, because they both multiply into 10. We'll go 2 and, two and 5, excuse me. 3 and 4 don't go into 10. So I don't need to include those. Okay. Notice we have a finite amount. We're done listing the factors. There aren't any more that we could possibly list. But when we start with multiples, I'm going to start things off with 10, then 20, 30, 40, 50, dot, 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 100, dot, 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 1,000, dot, 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 a million, dot, 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 a trillion. It just keeps going on and on, on and on and on and on, to infinity. Ooh, infinity, Buzz Lightyear. Okay, so those are our multiples of 10. Gosh, I'm not even done. There's so many more to list out, aren't there? These are all the factors. But multiples, man, they just keep going and going and going. All right, so this hopefully will give you just an idea of what the difference is if you're still having some trouble. If not, let's keep exploring, okay? Now, factors, remember, are like the building blocks of a number, okay? So each of these numbers can be multiplied into 10, whereas multiples are the solution of a number being multiplied by another number. So in this case, our a number is 10. And the other numbers that we're multiplying by 10, well, first it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 10, then 100, then 1,000, or 100,000. And, and we just kept going until, I mean, there's multiple numbers that we can choose to multiply by 10 to get our various multiples of 10. Okay? So when you're thinking factors and you're thinking multiples, I like to think of it all in kind of, a diagram kind of way. And this diagram, well, I'm going to draw a tree. Here's one way to remember this. What if I drew a tree? Okay, here's the roots of the tree, and here's the tree. This tree is of the number 10. Some of you guys have already seen this, okay? If you haven't, hopefully this will help things out a little bit. All right, this is just yet another way to think of factors and multiples. So if I'm drawing this diagram, of a tree with the number 10, I'm actually going to place its factors, 1, 2, 5, and 10, in the roots of the tree. And I didn't exactly put them in order, but that's okay. Okay, they're just factors. Yeah, they come in pairs, in this case, 1 and 10, 2 and 5, but a factor is a factor all by itself. Okay, uh, these numbers can be multiplied by some other number to equal 10. So in a way, they're like the building blocks of 10. Just like the roots of a tree end up building the tree up, these factors build the number 10. Okay, And there's only so many roots of a tree, just like there's only so many factors of a number. So they're finite. Okay, Now, the multiples of 10 are different. Gosh, there's 10, there's 20, 30, all the way up to a thousand, up to a million. Okay, I can add a trillion, I can add so many more. There's like I mean, obviously, there is a finite number of leaves, so this doesn't work perfectly. But, as far as I'm concerned, there are too many leaves to count, so I'm just going to say that there is infinitely many, even though that's not true. But, it's going to help me remember that the leaves of a tree will represent the multiples. Okay? Just like, and also, another reason is because leaves tend to branch out and out and out and up and up and up. Okay? Likewise, multiples 
they go out and out and out and they go up. Okay, this is down. But the numbers are going up and up and up and up and up. Okay, up into the sky, up and forever. So I thought this was a good way to think of that. Okay, another example is the following. I'm going to draw a factory. Ooh, factories. Okay, now this factory again is going to be the factory of 10. And there's multiple levels, which I'll get to in a minute. So this is a very punny one right here. Okay, here's some windows. Here's some smokestacks. I know, it's bad for the environment, but this is just a metaphor, so it's not real life. Now, in this factory, get it? Factory. Yeah, it's a knee slapper. Don't laugh too hard. Now, in the factory, we have a foundation. And in that foundation, I'm going to write the factors of 10. Because the foundation is what supports this building. Just like these factors are kind of what support the number 10. They build into the number 10. They're smaller. They start off smaller and then they become together. When you multiply them together, they'll become 10. Okay? So once that happens, then you're in this factor and you've got 10s going on. Now, on this, in this factor, you've got multiple levels. Get it? Multiple levels. And within these levels, so stuff is happening and it's blowing out smoke as a result. Because whatever factories do in this one, they're blowing out smoke, which I know is bad for the environment. I like the environment, don't worry. But this is just a metaphor, okay? Not real smoke. So don't blame me for hurting the environment. Now, these multiples of 10, well, like we said, they include 10, 20, 30, 50, 1,000, and so on. Okay, they're just going to keep going and going and going. And just like the smoke will, after a while you won't see it anymore, but it's just going to keep dissipating forever and ever. Okay, until you can't even really see it anymore in terms of smoke. smoke. But it can. the point is, is that it can go up and up and up and out and out and out as much as it wants. Just like these, fact, or these multiples can go up and up and up and out and out and out as much as they want. So now, first I just listed off the numbers. That was maybe one way to remember factors and multiples. Then I made some visual representations of our factors down below. And notice the factors in each of my representations are always lower than the number itself. Okay, so here's our number right in the middle. And then in both my visual representations, the multiples were up high. And they kept going forever and ever. Oh, this actually should be pointing to the leaves. <laughs> okay, they keep going forever and ever. These are actually the factors of 10, excuse me. So let's actually get rid of this so you don't get confused. So multiples were up high, up in the trees. Multiples were up high. Number that we worked with, 10, was right in the middle. And the factors. We're down below. Okay? Now, if these didn't help, here's some other ways to think about it. Let's say we're working with 10. 10 is our number. The factors of 10 are always going to be smaller than 10. So they're always going to come before 10 on the number line, aren't they? Okay, the factors are going to be on that side of 10. Now, yes, we do have a factor that is 10. But we also have a multiple that is 10. In fact, the last factor of 10 is always going to be 10 itself, and the first multiple of 10 is also going to be 10 as well. So that works with the number line as well. Let's list off our factors. 1, 2, 5, 10. Then we're at 10. Then we start with the multiples, and we can start with 10 again, and then 20, 30, and this keeps going. Okay? This side doesn't, this side does. Now, Factors starts with an F. Multiples starts with an M. Which letter comes first in the alphabet? F. That's a trick I've always used in school, figuring out the order of stuff. I always use the alphabet. If it works, wonderful. It's a great way for me to remember it. So F comes before M. Therefore, the factors of a number come before the multiples of a number. All right? So that's yet another way to remember it. Finally, Multiples, I like to think of it this way, and I said it in a couple of a couple other my video, couple other of my videos. Can't talk right now. Is that 
I feel like there's some movie or something out there where, where someone says, oh my gosh, they're multiplying by the millions. They're multiplying by the millions. So they go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Forever and ever and ever. Okay, if you're multiplying something by millions over and over and over, eventually you're going to have a quite a large quantity of things that are being multiplied together. Okay, unlike factors, which eventually will stop. Multiples will keep going forever. Okay, so finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to end by just giving you basically a quick definition of each thing, factor and multiple. Okay, so remember that a factor is just a number multiplied by another number to equal a number. That's all it is. Okay, it's the numbers that essentially build this number. A multiple, on the other hand, is some number, in this case 10, multiplied by another number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to infinity, to equal some numbers. So our multiples are the result of a multiplication problem, while a factor helps you arrive at the answer to a multiplication problem. So this is not the ending process, while well, these are. A multiple is the solution to a multiplication problem. But there's multiple, there's infinitely many solutions, whereas a factor, there's only so many that can help you build an answer. Okay? So I hope one of these methods, between just listing them out, having our visual metaphors with the factors at the bottom, our numbers in the middle, the multiples on top, multiple the factors serving as like a foundation of our object and then multiple serving as something that can be expanding forever hopefully maybe that helped if not maybe the number line method helped okay factors are smaller than our number so they're going to come first and multiples are bigger than a number so they're going to come next just like f comes before m in the alphabet so f is going to be first m is going to be next Factors start, multiples keep going at the end, forever and ever. And finally, multiples multiply by the millions. They keep going forever. So I hope maybe this will help you keep factors and multiples straight. And then once you understand these words very, very well, that's when finding the greatest common factor and the least common multiple that's when finding those two things will become easier and easier. Okay? So I hope this video tutorial helped just a little bit. And I know it's kind of silly, but I hope it helped you to help you remember the differences and similarities between factors and multiples of a number. Thanks.